Hello friends, hello. You got to hear me a little bit on my intro because I forgot to hit the mute button. That would have been good to do. <laughs> hello, but it's Friday, so right? It's a little bit laid back today. <laughs> hello, Lisa Everding. Hello, Trudy. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, UCI Mediva. You're gonna have to tell me how to say <laughs> <laughs> Greetings to you. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Sharon. It's so nice that you guys could stop by on Friday. I know you probably have a lot going on trying to finish out your work week, but it's really kind of you to stop in and say hello to me. Hello, Krista Height from Southern California. And I'm sure it's beautiful there today. We have colder weather again. And so um, I am really ready to, oh, Catherine said, heard nothing audible. Good. I, w I actually sang in the intro. I actually sang testing. And so I'm surprised you didn't hear that. <laughs> Hello, Yessie. It's so nice of you to be here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So it, it's gotten colder again. We thought we were getting spring and things are starting to bloom. Our um, daffodils are up and they're so beautiful. And then it's going to freeze again. So it's kind of depressing, which is all the more reason for me to make a springy Easter card today. So um, Catherine, don't look too hard at the card because you might be getting one of these actually. Catherine's here from SCT Magazine. Say hello to her. Just a quick note, if you don't know, our card event is open for general registration. I know Yessie's been on the card event. Um, I'm not sure if Sharon has, I know some of you have, but if you are at all you know, interested in making cards, learning new things, creating with a wide variety of manufacturers. That's the thing I love about this event is you get to work in different styles and try out, try out manufacturers that you may not have used before. Um, our general registration is open right now. You can go to um, SC, you can go to our Instagram feed, go to our LinkedIn profile there. Um, you can go to our website, go to our events page and check that out. And Catherine, feel free to share that too. So card event, don't miss it. It's so good. It's happening in the fall this year. Okay. Okay. She won't peek. Marilyn. Hello. Yeah. Everybody's saying hello to Catherine. Oh, Jen is all signed up and excited. It'll be your first. Hooray. It's awesome. It's a great event. You're really going to love it. It really is so good. Thanks, Mindy. Mindy's here. Mindy was the one who texted me and was like, you're not muted. <laughs> Thanks. See, that sleep helps, Mindy. The sleep helps. Um, oh, yes. And today, thank you for that reminder. And I've put this on my stories. Hopefully, you guys follow me everywhere. But I'm going to just pop up uh, my website, which has all my social media links are in the top right-hand corner of my website. So you can find me on everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram. But, and I put this in my stories, today is the very last day to register for Jolly Holiday, which is our summer holiday event. It's gonna be so good, you guys, so good. I cannot wait. We just had another design meeting this morning. The products are spectacular. I can't even tell you how excited I am about them. Um, so if you love to create holiday cards, but you get a little bit frazzled when <laughs> the end of the year comes and it's October, November, and you don't have them created yet, this is a really great way to get a jump start on that and take classes and learn new things at the same time. So uh, check that. Yes, I did see the text. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy said, these events are the best. Misty says, I'm signed up too. I was super impressed with my first SCT event and I love that everything is provided. Yes, that's the great thing about the SCT events is that you get a kit from each manufacturer taking part. So usually you will have to um, match up your inks to that kit. There are some manufacturers that might include inks, but other times you just have to match up your ink colors to what the instructors are using. But you get dyes, you get stamps, you get stencils, you get, you know, enamel dots, you get all sorts, all sorts of amazing things and lots of surprise gifts too. So Jenny is also signed up and she's a newbie to the SCT card making event. Oh, so excited. Yeah. Make sure you get on, um, make sure you get on Jolly Holiday, Jenny. Okay. So that is the big announcements today and, and the don't forget <laughs> for today. Uh, thank goodness it's Friday. Absolutely. They absolutely. So let's, let's have fun and let's make something. I'm going to go down to my overhead. You see why I'm a diva. Oh, see, 
when I'm live, I'm like trying to scroll real quick. You see why I'm a diva. I like it. I like it. Us divas got to stay together. Okay. Oh, Jenny says, I've done it five times. I was saying for the newbies. Okay. Yes, you're not a newbie. <laughs> it was great, but I didn't finish my sentence. <laughs> okay, Jenny, I gotcha. Jenny's like, don't call me a newbie when I'm not a newbie. <laughs> It's okay. Okay, I'm gonna get in a little bit closer so you can see the details in this card. And I wanna talk about this die set. So let me show you the die set at the same time I'm showing you the card. Hello, Mella. Happy afternoon from Austria. So glad you could be here. And this one's sticky on the back because there's a little bit of tape. So I should have covered that up. You know what, I'm going to right now. Let's cover that tape up so it doesn't stick to my glass. Just use some mint tape from scrapbook.com to cover that up. So this die set is from Spellbinders and it is the floral bunny basket. Now, let me take it out here so you can see everything that's included in here. I should have taken it out of the plastic before, but I didn't, that's okay. So you get every single tiny little piece of this this kind of basket that you can fill with tulips, you can fill it with lilies of the valley, you can fill it with carrots, you can fill it with the bunny bum. It's fantastic. And, and I'm going to be completely honest here, it's also overwhelming at the same time. And I am always like, I have two kids at home, I'm running around, I do all the cooking, I do the cleaning. And like, sometimes I don't really have time to make something so detailed you guys and i wanted to come on live today to show you how you can kind of simplify simplify something like this to make it what you want to create today now some days you might want to fill that entire basket like this you know they show you this on the back and some people always go by these kind of images and this card could take you a good hour to put together. And if you have several Easter cards to create, then that's a lot of, that's a lot of time. So today I kind of want to talk about how you can take it a step back so that you can make it more manageable for what you need to create today. So super, super fun. The thing I love about Spellbinders dies is just how detailed they are. Every single little ripple in the carrots, all the cutouts in the basket. Um, you know, they thought about doing the pink on the bunny feet and the little lines on the tail. I just think their, their dyes are so intricate and really cool. Yes, Misty, it is all in one die. You can find the link to that in my uh, video description below. Just hit the more button and you can see that. But yes, you get everything all together and this is all you need. And I will tell you, I, oh, there we go. I subscribed to their large die of the month. So Spellbinders didn't send this to me. I purchased it myself because I really thought it could be great for Easter cards for my kids and for my mom and dad. And so, you know, if I'm gonna be creating four or five cards at a time, I have to make it more manageable for me, okay? So that is the cool thing, Misty. And their large, uh, their large die of the month is always like something like that where you get everything together. Now, do I sort of wish that I would have gotten the stamp of the month with this? Maybe, because it's a little happy Easter that fits up here on the, um, on the basket. But what I did grab from my local store was this cute little lawn fawn set that has all of these different things that you can put in. You can also die cut out an egg. So if you wanted to fill eggs in the basket too. So it's very versatile, lots of different cute sayings and the egg. So then I could put eggs in the basket if I wanted to too. And these are super inexpensive. I've also linked these in my video uh, description below. They're inexpensive and just a really great way to stretch something like this even further. So can you tell I'm excited about it? Let me just go back to the camera. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about this. It's hot in here. <laughs> so I think when I get excited, it get hot. Okay, so let's get started with the background. The I really like this basket because there is so much texture on the basket, the flowers, the carrots, all the things. I really wanted the background to be smooth. I've seen a lot of people who have used um, an embossing folder on that background and it's a lot of texture. 
and so I just wanted that background to be nice nice and smooth and so I thought a blended panel would be perfect so you guys are gonna watch me as I create my son's Easter card and I've just turned around here to grab my paper inking palette this is from picket fin studios this has the backer on it too so if i wanted it to stick to my desk i could have it stick to my desk it's not necessary right now so i'm just gonna put my a2 size paper here and i am going to put this on a folded card later but i'm just going to keep it a2 size for now just in case there's any inconsistencies in the blending and I'm going to grab my yellow blending brush. This is from Gina K Designs. I think my yellow kind of needs to be washed. The rest of mine look great. It's just my yellow that looks a little bit iffy. And I forgot my ink stands. Of course, there's always something I forget. So tell me, you guys, do you create Easter cards or do you usually not send them? I'd love to know. I'm gonna start out with his card with yellow at the top, and I'm gonna go down to green this time. I wanted to do something a little bit different with my daughters. I did the girly yellow to pink. I'm gonna go down to green. And you know what? I am gonna take off the backing, actually. Let's take off the back. So all you have to do to make this fully stick to your work surface is peel off the back side, and then it's like a big stamp surface that's kind of what it feels like it's the same material that your that your stamps are made out of okay and then we can go in without anything moving and blend always go in a little bit light you don't want to have like you know light to dark areas i like to hold the top of my blending brush to kind of make sure that i get that control with my blending. Jen hasn't set um, Easter cards before, but she's planning on using this set tomorrow. Awesome. So I hope this helps you, Jen, because I know you're going to be doing it on your Saturday. So I'm sure you have a lot of other things to do at the weekend and sit for hours. I have some ideas. I have some ideas. And most of it's just scaling it back, doing things in a smart way, you know, not using too many colors, not, you know, not going too out there with it. I like to do, when I'm blending a panel like this, I usually do the rule of thirds. So I'll do two thirds, one color, one third, the other color. And that's just kind of a design rule, the thirds. It's a very, very important kind of design tool to use wherever you're, whenever you're placing things or lining something up, cropping photos even, if you're a scrapbook or even cropping photos, it's kind of important to follow the rule of thirds. And so I've got two thirds of yellow at the top. And you know what, this is going to smooth out even, even more. This is Concord and Ninth Buttercup Ink. And I didn't list all of my ink colors that I was going to be using because I wasn't actually sure <laughs> until right before I was going live. Um, so I will put those in as soon as I'm done. But all the Concord and Ninth ink colors just smooth out so beautifully. So if you think for a second it might look a little bit mottled, just give it, just give it five minutes and then go back to it. Jenny says, uh, yes, I made Easter cards last year for the first time. Okay, that's awesome. So this is the perfect timing. Oh, this is great. Yes, I'm so glad this is good timing for you. I thought this was a good kind of like lead up to Easter. Uh, Krista says she loves this die set and she's making her cards this weekend. Okay, so we're gonna go in with green this time because I want that little kind of grassy effect. So with my daughter's card, when I blended, I really didn't want the orange when I met the yellow to the pink. And so what I did was I was just really careful not to touch the pink to the yellow. So when you move the basket, there's a tiny, tiny bit of almost white there. And I think that worked out really well. Now here I'm not so concerned about meeting the yellow up to the green because it's just gonna make a more limey green. So not, not as big of a deal here. And you can see how on the edge of my card, See how much darker it is there? Oh, I just lost the light somehow. What happened? Hmm. 
my light changed on my camera somehow for some reason. Let me see here if I did anything here. No. Does the light look different for you guys on your end? It looks darker for some reason on my end. It could be just my screen. That could be it too. Maybe I have to increase my brightness. I'm not sure. So on the edge of the card, sometimes it gets a little bit darker. And that's why if I'm gonna trim it down, I like to start with an A2 and then trim it from there. So you can kind of trim off those darker, those darker edges. Okay. So there's my blended panel. And I think that that is going to look really good. Again, I'm gonna let it sit for a second and let that paper, that ink really get into the paper and see how that looks. Okay, let's go here. Oh, it could be the green. When I brought out the green, my, my camera did not like that. I don't know, that's very strange. Okay, I'm just gonna move my paper inking palette out of the way. I'm gonna let this sit over here just for a second. And then we are gonna pull out, I have die cut all the pieces of this die, of this die set. And I did this in twos, okay? It changed on our screen too, but can still see. Yeah, the light did look bluish. I think it was actually, cause now it's like kind of gone back. So I think it was actually the green that was making the camera change. That's so strange. Um, okay, so at the same time, this is one of my biggest tips. If you are gonna be making multiple cards, then what you need to do is at the same time you're cutting one die cut for the other because just the act of having your die set out and cutting multiple with the same die set saves you time. So even if, even if you plan on using, maybe creating just one card today, maybe go ahead, especially for my ladies who are going to be making their Easter cards, um, maybe go ahead and die cut for two just so that you have extras left over. You'll have, you know, two bunnies, you'll have two carrots um, left over, two flowers. So it's just such a faster process to, to do that um, at the same time than it is to go back. I'm just going to see if I can change this light with my lights above. Give me just a second. Let's see. Let's see if I can help my camera here. Okay, let's see if that works. And I'm gonna turn up these lights a little bit too. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna probably blind myself in the process, but <laughs> it's okay. All in the name of card making, right? Okay. You could also, Misty, that's a good point, you could use yellow and pink cardstock for the base instead of blending because that, um, that area where the two meet is going to be mostly covered by your basket for sure. So what I did here was I have my basket pieces and I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere those together. So you can see exactly, because I wanted you to see how that basket comes together. You have the back, which is, you know what, I'm gonna cut this. This just came off the other day, which I was kind of sad about, but now I have that little thing sticking off. So the basket front is like this, then you have the basket back. And I like mine to look quite uh, light. So that's why I did it in an off-white cardstock. And I tell you, Spellbinders, they really do think of everything with their die sets, they really do. They're fantastic, they're so detailed, they're, they're just really clever. Whoever designs their products, and I know they have quite a few, they just do a really good job of thinking things through and I always appreciate that with manufacturing because it, it makes it so much easier for the end user when the manufacturer has thought it all through. So, do you see how it's, a bit more blue, Simon. Is it weird? Yeah, my light changed, it's so weird. I'm gonna have to look at my camera settings and see. It could be like a white balance setting. It's trying to balance the white. And as soon as I pulled out the green, I think it changed, so weird. So I just did rows of glue there, nothing too crazy. 
And before I put this piece on, we're going to do a little bit of ink blending. This is my other, this is another thing I want to let you know. Like if you are doing a lot of die cutting, then you can get different looks out of the same colors of cardstock just by ink blending too. So you can get variation by ink blending instead of always switching out your cardstock colors. And I will, I will show you that a little bit more when we get to the greens too. Oh, Misty said that basket without the handle would look so cute with succulents or cacti. That's so perfect. Yep, absolutely. Or vegetables. Could you imagine it with strawberries in it? That would be super cute. I love it. Vegetables, strawberries, anything. My dad's a big gardener, so that would be a really good birthday card for him. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and put these on yet because I'm going to ink blend. So I am going to test out, I think... I can't remember if this is aqua sky, but it looks really similar. So what I'm going to do is I want to get some variation on that blue because I really think that you can take die cuts to the next level just by adding a tiny bit of ink. It really makes such a big difference. Okay, so we're going to use some aqua sky here and I'm going to just go over this edge. Now, it's just like when you are coloring, okay? And you're, you say you're coloring with Copics or your Olo markers, any alcohol marker, and you wanna add some shadow. That's the same thing you're doing when you're ink blending too. You're just adding shadow and you have to think about where the light's gonna come from. So right now, I want my light to come from this corner. So I'm going to add some shadow down here along the bottom and along this right side. So it's sort of the same as like when you when you do any kind of artistic rendering or you know things like that. And now I will tell you I went to design school and had to do uh, architectural renderings by hand and I was not the best at it you guys. It was not my strong suit. I had colleagues that were amazing that could do some amazing designs but I was just really glad when we started doing it all by computer because it was not my strong suit. So all I did there was add, and it's hard to see in the light, but all I did there was add a little bit of shadow along the bottom and on the side. And that really, it just really makes a big difference. You don't have to be heavy handed with that part. Okay. Yes, veggies, and I already have carrots. Now, the other thing about blending is you wanna blend anything that has a rounded shape. So a basket handle is rounded. Now this is quite thin to get it to where, exactly where you want it to be. But when you have a rounded shape, the center of the, that rounded portion is going to be lighter and the bottom and top edges are going to be darker. So therefore, I'm gonna take my basket handle and I'm going to go around the top and the inside to add just a little tiny bit of an ink blend there okay now this part does not take long and i really think that it's worth it in the end to not have just um just plain die cuts okay so there's that and then this portion is going to go it's like the the lip of the basket the edge and because that sticks out further than the basket the bottom edge of that is going to have a little bit of a shadow. So I could have kept my inking palette here, which I probably should have done, but I'll just get some inky fingers. It's okay. We don't have to, don't have to do much else with my fingers today. So might as well. Okay. There we go. So there's that bottom edge all inked up. Oh, that's so sweet. Grandparents. There's something about grandparents and sending Easter cards. I have to tell you, my grandmother, like she, she knew where to get the cards that looked like they were made in 1950. I don't know where she got them from, but she always found these Easter cards that had this really old fashioned like Easter bunny on it. And um, Simon's grandmother, who is in her 90s, still sends my my kids those cards too like the ones that look like they're from the 50s 40s or 50s like super old looking they're pretty cool and there's something about grandparents 
and mail. They just love it and they love sending it. And I love that you send them a card. That's so sweet. There we go. How cute is that? So can you see that darker color there and over here? It just it just shows that it's a rounded shape. It really makes a difference. So, you know, take the time to do that. I'm not going to add these on just yet. I'm going to wait. Okay. The other thing that I want to show you, I'm going to do the bunny next, but when we get over to the leaves and stuff, I'm going to show you. So the other thing I want to say is that don't feel like for every card you have to add in all of the things. I mean, look at, look at how stacked this basket is. It has three carrots. It has two tulips. It has one, two, three, four, five leaves. It has two lily of the valley um, sprigs. It has the bunny. That's a lot. That's a lot to die cut out. And just this, this basket here with four items in it and the bunny, because I offset the weight of the money over here with those things, that still looks like a pretty cute full Easter basket, right? So don't feel like you can't make the card if you can't do all the things. I think sometimes even I get wrapped up in the idea that if I can't give this product the full attention it deserves, then I'm not gonna sit down and make the card. When in fact, I could make something uber cute uh, with the time that I have and it would be just fine, right? Okay, so this is really cute. So you know exactly which foot is which side because the toe, the little toe sticks out further on that side and they've matched that up with the pink too. I love that. I love that. I think Mindy was on earlier and Mindy actually did the, um, the videos for this release for Spellbinders. And so be sure to check out what she created because it was really good. Mindy made some gorgeous cards, gorgeous cards with these products. I just love those little bunny feet. Aren't they the cutest? They are so cute. And those little inlay pink things. Now you could do this. You could cut this shape out twice in gray and pink, and then they wouldn't be like an inlay, but that little detail doesn't bother me that much to to die cut something else out again at all. So, okay, I'm just pressing that on there with my fingers. There's two feet, his ears. So what I'm gonna do before I put his ears on is I'm gonna gra grab my gray and we're gonna do a little blending on him too. I have Dove from Concord and Ninth. Getting a little bit carried away with my inks over here. I gotta move them. Okay, I have Dove. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So the light is gonna be coming from the left side. So I'm gonna kind of give him a bit of shadow over on the right side of his rump here, <laughs> his little bunny butt. Cause this side is gonna be probably more in the light if the light's coming from that side. And then his feet are gonna be lower. So we're gonna give a bit more shading effect down here where his feet are and a little bit down on this side too. So nothing, nothing overly complicated. You don't want him to start to look dirty. You just want, oh, let me get his ears too. Yes, Kathy also made a card from this die set. And you know what? The first time I saw that video, I thought, oh my gosh, Kathy used this set. Like clean and simple Kathy. And because it's a, you know, it's a lot. The set is a lot. And she did a gorgeous job at what she created too. So even if you are a clean and simple card designer and you like things to be you know simplified you can take a die set like this and make it simple let me just do my feet too i think for the feet we're gonna go kind of on this side not gonna go over overboard here with the shadows down here because i don't think i don't think you'll really notice the the feet shadows too much She'll be just looking at that cute little bunny bun, okay? And I'm not gonna put any shadows on the tail because that's at the very top and it just kind of sticks out. So for the ears, I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue here and here, and then pop his tail on. 
and then you can kind of adjust accordingly. So cute. It's so easy to create. The other thing I like about Spellbinders products, it's really hard to see in the light here, but there is a little debossed line and it shows you exactly where to place the feet and where to place that tail. And I love that kind of detail and they make it just really simple for you because somebody really smart has designed this set. And so if you want to lay it out the way that they designed it, they're showing you exactly how to do that. Super cute. Oh, Mindy said, thanks. I'm still here fixing some stuff while listening. Yeah, feel free to put any of your videos in the chat, Mindy, um, where you created with this set too, so that people get some more ideas. But I just, I just love it. I think it's so cute. It's great for kids. It's great for adults. That's the other great thing about this set. It's just, I think all ages would appreciate it. And if you didn't want to use the bunny bum for an adult card, fill it with carrots and flowers or, you know, something like that would be so cute. Okay, so there's my little bunny. I'm going to put him over here. Let me put my basket over here. So all the finished things are going on one side. Okay, let's do the leaves. Here's what I want to say about the leaves. Stick with the same colors for your leaves. I know you like variation in these die cuts. Um, then instead of cutting from multiple colors and pulling out different colors of cardstock, stick with one color of green and then use your ink to create some shade variation, right? That saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time. So I'm just using parsley on parsley here and it's going to give us it's going to give us a different a different look than if we had not used ink at all. You could even go darker if you want to and get even more like tonal variation in your leaves by choosing artichoke. Artichoke's a great one to go on top of parsley because it gives it that like darker, uh, less vibrant green. But just by using the same color, you know, say you only buy cardstock with ink so that you only have the same colors, then be by all means use the same color of ink. It does make a difference. And I'm going to be doing that on the tulips too. But look at the difference that made in the leaves just by adding that tiny little bit of ink. So stick with one color green and use your ink. Oh, that's a great idea, Misty, to use gray flocked cardstock. I love that. That would be super cute. I did see that I think Tina Smith, who um, is on the SCT design team, and I think her work is gorgeous, she used, I think, cotton ball on the tail <laughs> to give him a little, a little fluffy tail. Okay. The carrot greens are too small, so I'm not going to bother with those, but I am going to blend up the tulips. So with this one, I think in the example, they use three different colors of yellow. Yeah. So they, you can use multiple colors of yellow, multiple colors of pink or whatever color tulip you want to use, but instead you can use your ink and then you're not pulling out multiple colors of cardstock and die cutting everything multiple times, right? So just time savers. Always think about how you can make the most of your creative time because sometimes we have to schedule that, right? We have to schedule that for ourselves. Now this one here is kind of the base and you don't see much of the base once you get those petals on unless you want to make it a really wide open tulip. But for me, I like my tulips to look like they just started opening up, right? So that's how I'm doing it today. I think I'll put a little bit at the top because if you think about the two petals covering this, then you're gonna see a little bit of darkness at the top. So there's my yellow. And I'm gonna do, what did I do? An orange one, because I thought with the blue basket, I thought orange would be a really lovely contrasting color for my second tulip for my son's card. So I did Clementine. I'm gonna grab Clementine and grab my little orange tulip here. There we go. 
So the one thing I wanted to tell you guys about is that I don't think I've announced it on here before, but it's on my Instagram, of course, but I am involved in the Weekender event with Spellbinders. And I'm really excited about it because it is their first event. So I'm really just chuffed that they asked me to, to join in. Super excited. Um, oh, you know what? This orange is Creamsicle. Creamsicle, the new one by Concord and Ninth, which I, I think is gorgeous. So we're adding a little bit of darker orange here. Um, but the Weekender is coming up in May. So super excited about that. I am going to be creating a bonus card, so I don't have one of the main classes, but what it is, is a weekend only event. There's a kickoff on Friday night, and then you have your main classes on Saturday taught by the designers who designed the sets. Um, and let me just bring up the picture, not that one, this one. So these are all the designers that are involved. So BB Cameron, Carissa Wiley, uh, Nicole Spore, and Yana, I believe, are the ones who designed the main sets, and maybe Vicky too. Um, and then some of us have uh, like bonus classes where we've kind of combined some of the kits together to create bonus cards. So it's gonna be super fun. Um, and I will just tell you, you know, I talked about how the Spellbinders dies are just so well designed, so well thought out. Well, this event has like six full sheets of dies that are just going to amaze you. There's so, there's so many dies involved in this class, these classes, and they're really fun and gorgeous and different than what you're going to find in other ones. I love how you guys are thinking about all the things that can go in the basket. That's so cute. Um, so it's definitely event, an event that you should check out. Again, it's Spellbinder's first event, but you know, if you've ever taken any of their kits plus classes, I have actually done the Glimmer class, which I loved. They have an amazing production team over there at Spellbinders with, you know, Kim, Nicole's usually there to comment and they, you know, they have a great production team doing their videography. So that is super top notch. And I will just hint that I may be on camera. That's all I'm going to say. So I hope you guys will check it out. Let me just put this in here again. So it's May 17th to 19th, um, $199. So be sure to check out the link in my video description so you can learn more about it. It's going to be super fun, but it's a it's an all-star kind of lineup of uh, card makers, and you know everyone has different beautiful styles, and so I think it's it's definitely an event worth checking out. Okay, just creating my little tulips here. I'm going to bring them down a little bit on the stem because I'm going to be cutting off some of that stem. Mella says, great designers. I hope the kit would be available in Europe because the delivery and custom costs are expensive. I believe that they, so Mella, they are selling it through the UK site too. And you know what? I think, I think I did have that link or no, you can, I think you can click the link in my profile and then switch over to the UK site and see it as well. So check that out. And then I think from the UK, that should be easier for you. So, hi Mari, just signed up yesterday. I don't know much about it. Well, you know, I think if you love Spellbinders, you, if you love their products, then, you know, that's that's a reason for signing up. It's, it's gonna be fun. The cards, I've seen the cards, they are stunning. Look at how cute those tulips are. The cards are stunning. And so I do not think you will be disappointed at all. I'm going to do the same with my carrots, you guys. Just add a little bit of little bit of shadowing. So this is a clementine carrot, and then I also did a creamsicle carrot. So I wanted a darker and a lighter. But again, save time, use the same color of cardstock, and then just change it with the ink. Change it with the ink. Thanks for being here, Mari. So I'm just getting the top of him because the bottom is going to be bottom is going to be hidden anyway. 
Okay, I think we're almost there with all of our dies. Now, is my son going to care about me taking the time to do all of the Lily of the Valleys? No, he is not. So what I'm going to do to, to like stretch out what I've already done, my mom's card is going to get all these Lily of the Valleys because I know that she loves them. So on hers, instead of doing, you know, two carrots, I might do all the flowers and I might just cut some more tulips, right? So instead of thinking, oh, I have to put these Lily of the Valleys on here to make it a great card. No, you do not. It's, this is all about changing your thinking and just making the time for what you have to still create an, a great card, right? And that's what, you know, kind of, we all have to make the most of our time and make decisions when we're, when we're crafting. And this is just a great way to create something beautiful while taking a little bit of a shortcut. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Mari, stop, I'm blushing. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, and this is, this is kind of fun. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead, now the center, so these guys are gonna go over here, right? So these are gonna go on the side. If you turn it over, I'm gonna bring them all the way down so that they fit on an A2 card. Then I'm gonna put my dimensional adhesive down here. And that is how I'm gonna build this card because the dimensional adhesive is gonna stick there. I'm gonna start sticking things to it. Do you guys know that when you make, a, I learned this during my wedding, my, uh, my husband's stepsister made our bouquets and so I watched her create them. And what I never realized is that florists kind of hold that hand tied bouquet in their hand while they're creating to make sure that it looks great before they, before they then tie it together, right? That's the best way to do it because you wanna make sure that it looks great in the hand. Well, that's essentially what you're gonna be doing here. You're just gonna be holding it, pressing everything to the back, and then getting it down with glue too. So my bunny is gonna go here and we don't wanna forget him. He's like the main attraction, right? So I'm, do you like that? My husband just laughed at me. He's sitting in the room with me, so he liked the main attraction. He's so excited about the bunny coming. Yeah, my, he just said my son is so excited about Easter Bunny coming. So, so we got to put the bunny on the card. So he is going to go on first, and then look at what I'm going to do. Well, when I get to, when the, when I get this stuck down to the card, I will make sure that I put some extra dimensional adhesive on the back of him. Okay. So you wanna get your main item down first. Then my carrots are going in the forefront. I want my lighter one first. So he is gonna stick down to that dimensional adhesive first. So this is the fastest way I think that this, this can go together. Then my darker carrot, because I want him to be closest to the bunny, is going to go here. Now I've covered up most of my dimensional adhesive with my light carrot but I'm finding a little tiny piece that I can stick him to just to make sure he's he's in where he needs to be because this can get a little bit like kind of a little bit difficult <laughs> placing all these things and so I find I think that this is like the easiest way to get it done now I am going to just hold this here while I take a look at where I want my flowers so my orange flower, I want it to come out a little bit, but not too, too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick him there. So I'm just pressing up his, uh, his stem on that dimensional adhesive. And then my yellow flower is going to go kind of in the front, but a little bit higher. So I'm gonna get that yellow flower stuck down too. And then the greenery is just gonna be there to fill in some of these gaps. Okay, so I wanna make sure that greenery goes behind my orange flower, and then I'm gonna press it to that dimensional adhesive. Now remember, the bottom might be pressed down, but the top is still loosey-goosey, so you're gonna have some wiggle room to be able to move that top where you want it to go. This is all about you like saving yourself from 
all the cursing when <laughs> when something goes and gets stuck on the edge of your desk and you can't get it off and then you ruin one of your die cuts, right? We don't want that to happen. So this guy, I'm gonna put him right here behind that carrot and press and press. And I think, do I want one more green? No, you know what? I have two more leaves and so I'm gonna make the executive decision here to not put any more to not put any more leaves on there because those two leaves could go to the third card I'm gonna create, okay? So there's that. Doesn't that look so pretty, the juxtaposition of the orange and yellow against that teal? I love it. And that teal is Aqua Sky from Concord and Ninth. Now, I am going to flip this over because all of those are stuck down where I want them to be. I'm gonna add my glue here and add my glue there. And then remember, I know exactly where I need this to be placed to get that on an A2 card. Now, if you're making a five by seven, you can go higher with that, with that um, handle, but on an A2, you need to get it down a little bit so it can sit on that card front. So Mella said there is a shop in Germany where I hope the kit is available. At the moment, I'm on the notification list. Well, good luck. I hope you, I hope you get to get that from that shop because yes, I know it is hard for customs and duties when it goes out of the US. Look how pretty you guys, isn't that so pretty? And then you can kind of take a look, make sure you're happy with that against that background. And I think it is so pretty. I love it, it makes me happy. Okay, and then this is when you will do a little bit of this. We're gonna cover it all with glue, get it all stuck down in place make sure that nothing is going to come out all that hard work that we did especially if you have to mail it right especially if you have to put this in the mail something like this that you create needs to go in a like a padded mailer because this is a this is a special one this is one of those like i have cards that my grandmother sent me not handmade but just really nice cards over the years and those are the ones that go in the keepsake box right now this bunny is kind of sunken back a little bit. So we are going to, oh, Michelle, thank you so much. And I really hope my, my goal in my Friday lives is to actually teach you something. So the fact that you said that makes me very happy. So thank you, Michelle. Okay, so I glued all that down. Wasn't that so easy to kind of place it in your hand with that dimensional adhesive? Because it would be really difficult otherwise. Now look at where I place this here on this card and I kind of want to line it up. Oh, before I do that, I just remembered. We didn't trim our card. Remember to trim your card. I want this tiny little bit, just a tiny, tiny little bit. So I'm just going to cut off an eighth of an inch. I love that this trimmer, which Minnie reminded me that I have and told me that I need to use it because I'm having, I've been having issues with my trimmer, my Fiskars trimmer, just going through blades like it's no tomorrow. I feel like I'm spending a fortune on blades because I do do a lot of paper cutting, but she reminded me I have this trimmer. I need to use it. And if you don't have it, I'll put it on my description list so you can check it out. It's a good one. I just need to get used to the guillotine. You know, I, the Fiskars one, I really like where I can see everything, where I'm cutting it. And I just need to really get used to that guillotine. That's all. Okay. Oh, you know what I also need to do before I do that? Stop the presses. Put it on a card front. Let's do that. Put it on the card front because it'll be much harder to do that later. And my glue is currently curing, so we don't want to let it cure too, too long. Turn that the right way. This is the scrapbook.com dots tape runner. It's permanent, but I like the dots because it gives you a little bit more time to pick it up and move it if you need to. So I think that that is important. My dad is texting me, don't know why, but okay, there we go. And you know what else I, also I wanna do is get some glue on here. There we go. And turn him over. Lori says, I learn something every time I watch you create a card. Your cards are always so fabulous. That is so sweet. Hello, Kelly Wicker Cards. Thank you for stopping by. Nice to see you here. That is so sweet, Lori. And I love your little doggy face. 
love your doggy face on your on your picture i miss my dog every day we lost our dog um the the day after christmas and yeah so i really we really miss him so seeing a little doggy face makes me happy how cute is that you guys i think that's perfect and look at that little card duo and just thinking about it i think i would do the same kind of card in another colorway with purple my mom really likes purple so i'll probably do that next okay so what i'm going to do up here because look this is all kind of like loosey loosey goosey and you know what i didn't do is i didn't put any glue on my handle so let's go in here and this is not ideal but you know card making is never actually the most ideal thing is it but we are going to stick that down and then I'm going to get some dimensional adhesive to make sure I get my tulips in place too. Get my tulips in place. You guys are so sweet to be on here. I'm trying to, you know, make sure I go live more regularly. Um, next week though, super exciting. We have the SCT magazine issue release. So I will not be going live, but you can catch, Catherine Tashjian, who was just on here at the beginning of my live, she's going to be going live to show you guys the issue and wowzers. It's a gorgeous one. I was really uh, fortunate to be chosen for the cover artwork. So Kathy Z and I are on the cover, which I mean, sharing a cover with Kathy Z is pretty amazing too. So I hope you guys will watch that. There's going to be, there's always a giveaway on that video. Here's a little trick. If you need to put dimensional adhesive behind something that's already down, take your little spatula, attach your dimensional adhesive to your spatula like this, pick it up, press it down, and pull your spatula out. It makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna do that to the ears too. Do that to the ears. So yeah, I hope you guys will join for that. It's it's super exciting when the when a new issue comes out, just so cool and it's a spring summer issue now so you're going to have issues for two um inspiration for two seasons in one issue it's going to be awesome so be sure to check that out i actually just posted the link today on the sct blog post so today's blog post if you scroll to the end of it um, it has a giveaway too from our friends at the stamps of life but if you scroll to the end you'll see the announcement about the video and you can Click the link there to hit notify me on the YouTube video. I got a little bit of adhesive there, but look, that is so cute. Okay, so bunny butt. Yes, my husband said bunny butt. To finish off the card, like I said, I didn't get the stamp, but what I did get was um, another set from Lawn Fun. I got this from my local store, and I'm super excited about it because now I can ink blend some some eggs and put the eggs in the basket how cute is that so i've like made double duty double duty on that one so this is my daughter's card that's my son's we're gonna stamp happy easter in aqua sky and let me grab my misty oh thanks ann i'm so glad you enjoyed that yes i had i was on uh, i was in spc fest with scrapbook.com you can still find all the links to that um, I think they're on my Instagram, LinkedIn profile, maybe on my blog, I think so. So you can find all the links to that so you can watch my video. If you're into scrapbooking, I did a scrapbooking video for that one. So I'm kind of all over the place at the moment. We're doing all the things. Now, this is something to think about when you want to make a sentiment. I did, I cut myself a nice long half an inch, half an inch wide piece of white cardstock. But I don't want my sentiment to start until it gets to that basket. I think if it, if it would have started over here, the line would be off and it would look a little bit strange. So you want to start it at the start of your basket. So you need to give, make sure that you have a good half an inch there where you don't have your sentiment. So let's put our Happy Easter. Let's get that in place. I just love this card. I hope you guys love it too. Hope you got some inspiration. The set is still available at Spellbinder, so be sure to check out 
the link in the video description if you want to pick that up even if you can't create with it this year you'll still have that basket you'll still have those gorgeous tulips and the lilies of the valley and you can make something really gorgeous that happens to me all the time my stamp sticks but good thing I have that grid that tells me it's still lined up okay I'm gonna use aqua sky here oh no look even mistakes poo-poo's happened to me too okay let's see if I can get this on the first go sometimes I can and sometimes I can't even with the misty even with the misty things happen that looks pretty good and we don't want to press it down too too hard oh I think I inked it up a little bit more unhappy than I did on Easter so you know what I'm gonna do this could be a mistake but we're gonna go with it I'm just gonna do like the tiniest tap that looks good can my son read no he cannot he is three so it doesn't matter it looks great it looks great the other thing I'm going to do is grab a little this little guy which is a little die cut that cuts the little edge for you and this this is actually from the celebrations delivered class with SCT magazine so if you were in that you have one of these too and I think that after you know the event is over that is going to be my most used die ever because I just keep it out on my desk now and so whenever I want to die cut this then I just do it I I used to do it with my scissors all the time and so you can you can absolutely do that but it is quite nice to not pull out your scissors and just have that little nice die cut edge there right so nice okay almost done here if you guys watch today be sure to give this video a like be sure to check out my other videos um, subscribe to the channel if you like what you watched I have a video with Kathy in case you missed it from Sunday that um, we did a knock it off series and that was super fun I love doing anything with Kathy so when Kathy asked me to do something I'm all for it okay so here I'm just gonna measure how much I need to trim off uh, from the H and I think half an inch is perfect so I'm going to take out my trimmer which is over here put my H at the half inch point here which is kind of right up against the edge and press down and trim I'm getting better at it I'm getting better at that trimmer and then all I have to do is because there's you know nothing over here we're gonna put a little bit of dimensional adhesive over there I think two layers two layers I believe maybe let's see let's see what we can fit here yes it was so fun Kelly Kathy is just a joy to do anything with so like I said when Kathy asks you to do something you're you go you do it Kathy's just fun and she's so just wonder, wonderful and helpful, helpful. She, if I text her and with a question, she gets back to me within a heartbeat and says, you know, gives me an answer, helps me out with when something's going wrong with my camera, etc. So maybe I'll ask her about that weird blue thing today because now the color is great. So <laughs> I don't know. Okay, putting a little bit of adhesive here and I need to degunk the top. And let's place this right against that edge and right there and I don't want that I didn't put a lot of glue over here because I do want this kind of edge to pull up a tiny bit you can even take your fingers and pull those up and then the last thing I know I've used these before and I'm almost to the end of them and it makes me so super sad so sad but I've got some clear dots and the clear dots actually make things look like they have dew on them which I think is really fun so I put a few of the clear dots always use a good knife edge for these kind of things because that helps you get those up it helps you place them really easily when you use your fingers it's just such such a hard thing to do so kind of putting these and there are other ones that are even smaller than these 
that can actually look like more, you know, more like water droplets. But I just love these kind of little clear dots on flowers and greenery. I just think they look really sharp. I'm gonna put this one right about there. And then on the background, I'm gonna add some one, two, I did five on my daughters, three, four, and I did one right in here, five. We're gonna add a few little colors. So let's see what I can get here. The problem is, is that they all kind of look the same in all the light I have going on here. So I'm gonna lay them out so I can see them. I want green ones at the bottom so they can go with the green. That one's a little broken, so I might replace them. Here's a big one, green and then yellow when we get up to the top. So just matching these up with my blended background here. And I'll put that one right at the top. How cute is that? These are so good, Kelly, and they are not available anymore. Let me just show you, but they do have other ones. These are the confetti mix from Honey Bee Stamps. They don't have a hole in them. They're super flat on the bottom and they are gorgeous colors, but they don't have this carousel lights mix anymore, but they have other ones. So go and check them out. I love them. Isn't that the cutest? I just love it. Now, let me just remind you, this is a lot. This is a lot of dyes, this is a lot of cutting, but I could make that card with another one in the same hour just by doing, you know, sticking with the same colors of die cutting, uh, doing things over and over again. If you get all your die cutting out of the way in one go, then you can create multiple cards in one sitting much faster. So remember to kind of stick to the same ink color, stick to the same cardstock colors, do blending to get more variation. And you can get cards like these that look super complicated done in not a lot of time. So I hope this, this got you guys thinking about your Easter cards. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello. I hope this got you thinking about your own Easter cards um, and that you're excited to make something this weekend, hopefully, just by some of the ideas that I shared. Thanks, Kathy says adorable. Kelly says I need those. They look great for spring. They are, they're really cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna remind you, if you like the products I use today, everything is available in the video description below. Don't forget The Weekender, check that out. There's a link below in my video description as well. Check out that event. It's gonna be really great, you guys. Amazing cast of creatives in there. I think the image is too big for that. But lots of amazing people creating. I'm really excited about it, I can't wait. All right, thank you guys so much for being here on this Friday. If you're watching on replay, be sure to leave a comment so that I can uh, find out that you watched and let me know what you loved about this video and be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks so much, you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, creative weekend. Bye-bye.